As soon as we have, I see everybody on the screen, names up. Um, any, anybody else uh, we're waiting on or are we good to go? I think everybody council-wise and staff is here, Tom. Okay, very good. Well, then, go ahead and welcome everyone to the November 23rd, 2021 City Council, adjourned City Council meeting. Uh, we'll read the virtual rules. City Council Chambers remain closed to the public in accordance with Assembly Bill 361. All members of the City Council and City staff will join the meeting via phone or video conference and no teleconference locations are required. Following alternatives are available to members of the public who wish to watch the meeting and or provide comments to the City Council before and during the meeting. Audio video broadcast, the city council meeting can be accessed in real time from your computer, tablet, or smartphone at the following link. Uh, and we have those links online at the city website. You can watch the meeting on cable contest channel 96. You can watch it on the city's YouTube page, and you can join and participate in the Zoom meeting. Turn the page. How to comment during a public meeting. Public comments will be taken at the time of each eligible agenda item. If you would like to submit written con comments, please submit written comments by email to cityclerk at lospanis.org or drop them off at City Hall at 520 J Street. If you are a Zoom video conference participant to comment by Zoom video conference, click the raise your hand button to request to speak when public comment is being taken on an eligible agenda item. You will then be unmuted during your turn and allowed to make public comments. After the allotted time, you will then be remuted. If you are a phone participant to comment by phone, please call on one of the above listed phone numbers and they are on the website. You will be prompted to raise your hand by pressing star nine to request to speak when public comment is being taken on an eligible agenda item. You will then be unmuted during your turn and allowed to make public comments. Then press star six to unmute yourself in order to speak. After the allotted time, you will then be remuted. The important things to remember during a public comment period, all attendees shall be muted upon entry to the meeting. Please do not raise your hand if the item currently being heard is not on the item you wish, is not the item you wish to speak on. We will call for public testimony on each item individually. When the item you are interested in is called and public speakers are invited to raise their hands, raise yours then and we will call them all in the order they are raised. You may, of course, speak on multiple items, but your comments during each item must address the item currently under discussion. Speakers attempting to speak about items other than the item currently under consideration will be muted and asked to wait for the item they're here to speak about to be called. If there is any disruption to the meeting, the live feed to YouTube and Channel 96 will be paused for a short period of time. Once the disruption is corrected, the live feed will resume and the meeting will continue where it left off. So now I will call the meeting to order at 4.04 p.m. and ask Police Chief Breezy to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief. Get my chair. All right. 
-hmm. Roll call, Ms. Melanie. Jones. Present. Lambert. Here. Lewis. Here. Lamas. Here. Maria. Here. We have a quorum. Now we will move to item four, consideration of approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Mayor, Council Member Lambert. Oh, Lambert, Mr. Lambert, I have a motion by Mr. Lambert. Do I have a second? Mayor Yamas here, I'll second that. Thank you. Motion by Council Member Lambert and a second by Council Member Yamas to approve the agenda as submitted. Uh, Ms. Melanie, roll call. Jones. <clears throat> yes. Lambert. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Lamas. Yes. Maria. Yes, motion carried unanimously. Agenda has been approved. We're going to go to the public forum now. Members of the public may address the city council on any item of public interest that is within the jurisdiction of the city council. This includes agenda and non-agenda items. No action will be taken on non-agenda items. The public may submit their comments uh, via handwritten statement uh, by dropping it in the utility payment box at City Hall, 520 J Street, by mail or email the city clerk at cityclerk at lospanis.org. Comments received will be read into the record during the city council meeting. If you are here to speak on the um, ARPA workshop, item six, uh, we will take those comments after the staff presentation and, uh, and as we would in public forum. And so then there would be a, a five minute limit on that as in public forum. Um, and we'll take that after the uh, after the, the, the staff presentation for the uh, American Rescue Plan Act spending plan and workshop. Are there any public, would anyone like to speak in the public forum? Uh, I see no hands raised. Ms. Maloney, written comment? Um, I do have four written emails that I received, but they all have to do with ARPA. Okay. Um, we will uh, go ahead and take those then at that time, since that's uh, the item they are addressing. So uh, I will close the public forum and go to item six. This is our workshop regarding the city's American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA spending plan. And for that, we go to finance director Williams. Good evening, mayor and council members. Tonight we have the fun American Rescue Plan Act to discuss and go over. Um, so let's just jump right in. So tonight our workshop, or workshop goals are to start with an overview of what ARPA is, um, share the results of the community uh, survey that we provided for about a month, a little over a month to the community to provide feedback. Um, I'd like to inform you on what some of the eligible expenses are that we can use the funding to um, and for, and then also and get council's feedback on what they think of proposed uses and if they have any other uh, uses that they want to discuss. And then finally, we can focus on uh, the funding that is remaining that hasn't been assigned. So tonight, what we're going to go over with the eligible expenses are four different categories of eligible expenses. And within each one of those categories, there's another range of categories. And each of those categories are uh, quite restrictive on what we may or may not do with the funding. So we'll be discussing that along the way. So first of all, um, ARPA was established to address the impacts of COVID that they have both on the community and on the city itself. It was signed into law on March 11th, 2021. Um, the American Rescue Plan Act or ARPA as we call it provides relief to respond to the coronavirus, including aid to local governments in every city, town, and village in America. The city of Los Banos itself was awarded $9.8 million. We did receive our first payment of about $4.4 million in July of this, or this year, and we are set to receive our second payment in July of 2022. Uh, we do have to periodically report to the Department of Treasury uh, with the first report being due April 30th, 2022. It was originally due in October of this year. However, the final rule hasn't been released yet by the Department of Finance or the Department of Treasury. 
and then you push back the reporting requirements for any use. <clears throat> In addition to the reporting, um, we the the ARPA funding covers the costs from March 3rd of 2021, and that the funds have to be obligated to be spent by December 31st of 2024 and performance by December 31st, 2026. Performance essentially means that we have to have the check written and paid for that project by the end of December 31st, 2026. So the American um, Rescue Plan, some of the things that we need to consider when we're making our decisions, um, we'd like to avoid funding items that could be funded by other federal, state, or county sources. So we really don't want to duplicate funding. Um, we also want to use, because it's one-time revenues that we're receiving, we want to use it for one-time expenses and try to avoid ongoing programs that will cost additional funding that maybe the city can't absorb after the ARPA funding runs out. Um, we have a long time to spend this money, so we could be cautious, we could be slow about it, um, really do a lot of research on the programs uh, that are programs and or projects that we want to commit funding to. Um, you'll see tonight that I am requesting some funding and to do it in small increments that way if the program is not successful, we don't have to fully commit all that money. And if it is successful, maybe we want to commit more money. So that's what we mean by remain flexible and we have a long horizon to spend the money. And then we want to continue to review the revenue loss related to the COVID pandemic. So you'll see as one of the spending priorities that we can reimburse the city for lost revenues. Unfortunately, we don't qualify for the first calendar year 2020. Um, we will know by the end of December if we qualify for 2021 and so on and so forth. So it's something we can kind of leave funds back for in case we do qualify in the coming years. So when I mentioned that we don't want to duplicate um, funding, some of the programs that are still in existence for COVID assistance and um, some that ha have already been extended or is what I mean when I say we don't want to duplicate the funding. So current funding that's available are rent and utilities. These are state programs. I'm happy to say that just today we received a couple of checks of um, assistance for some of our utility bill payers. The state is, um, they've applied for the rent, the, I'm sorry, the utility assistance program. And we received checks. One of them was over $2,000 to help somebody catch up with the utility bill. Um, we did do this in the CARES funding as well. And so that's one of the things that we may not want to see duplicated. Food resources, um, there are several different resources out there for uh, people to, to get food, um, whether it's a shelter or uh, they have a pandemic EBT, EBT card for children. They also have uh, changed the rules a little bit about WIC and who applies for it, um, all to kind of fall in line with the program and the needs of the community with the pandemic. Uh, currently, the state also has the California Venues Grant available. This is for different small businesses um, in the area that can apply, apply for this. Employees retention credit is also for businesses within California, and that's open to apply through December 31st. Another um, small business program is Economic Injury Disaster Loan, which is available through December 31st, 2021. And also there's currently Project Room Key, which is to help um, shelter homeless that might be affected by COVID, whether they were, whether they are sick, um, feel that they have been exposed or need to get out of the COVID situation. These are program, um, vouchers that can get them hotel rooms. And then prior funding includes all the stimulus payments um, that we're well aware of, a paycheck protection program for small businesses that was offered through the state, a California small business grant program, Restaurant Revitalization Fund, uh, Small Business Association Debt Relief, Mortgage Forbearance, um, Shutter Venue Operations Grant, and then again, the city had a small business program and also offered city, city utility assistance program with CARES. So these are either funding that has already been established or is, is still available to um, people in different aspects of needing relief. So let's just jump into the public opinion of the, the survey results. Unfortunately, we only had 77 people respond to our survey. 
we did float it for a longer amount of time so we can try to reestablish um, the link out there and let people know that it was still out there. And even with before we did that, we only had 39 responses. After we did that, we got the rest of the responses. There were 75 residents of Los Banos that respond, responded and for business owners. Um, the most important thing that they said um, was premium pay for essential workers at 52%. And the least important thing that the, that the community wanted to spend the money on was broadband infrastructure. So, Sonia, can I, yes. I have a question. On the survey, I didn't, I didn't get to see it. Um, is it possible that one person can fill out the survey more than once? Yes, it is. It doesn't, it doesn't stop anybody from filling it out multiple times. Okay, and there, in the staff report, um, including with the staff report, there was an ARPA funding community survey results. So it shows um, all the results for the questions. The chart that's being shown right now, one of the questions that we asked is, what are the three things that are most important to the respondent? And as you can see here, um, 51 people stated that premium pay for essential workers is what was most important. Um, coming in second was cover the payroll for eligible city public employees, and this would be anybody who's responding to COVID, and then spend the money on public safety at 29 people responding. So again, each person had three responses on this particular question. And then the least important items were um, rental assistance, housing programs, uh, three people skipped, skipped the question, and those all came even. So unfortunately, we didn't get the results that we had hoped for. We thought more people would respond to the community survey. We left it open for an extra two weeks and we just didn't get the response that we were hoping for. So just jumping into what we can use the funds for, there are four different categories, as I mentioned before. Um, the first category is to respond to the public health emergency or its negative impacts. So by, by responding to the public health that means that we could spend the funding on mitigation efforts of COVID, medical expenses, behavioral health care, um, and then certain public health and safety staff. And this is where paying uh, payroll for employees that respond to COVID falls into. Part of category one also is to address negative economic impacts caused by the public health emergency. This is um, where we would include harms to workers, households, small businesses, all impacted um, industries or public sectors that are impacted by COVID. The second category is to provide premium pay to essential workers. As council remembers, uh, part of the negotiations, we did address that. Um, and you'll see a slide later here that shows the breakdown of what essential workers will be receiving. The third category is to backfill a reduction in revenues. And there is a very specific calculation that needs to be done in order to fill, um, to, to, to define whether or not we are eligible for this category. And unfortunately, as I mentioned before, we are not eligible. Category three has the most flexibility to spend the money in. Um, because we are not eligible for it, it makes it a lot more restrictive as to how we can spend the funds. And then finally, the fourth category is to make necessary investments in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. And these are um, it, these are items that we'll go over in more detail a little bit later. So starting with the first category of public health emergency or neg negative economic impact, um, again, this the eligible uses include assistance to households, small businesses, nonprofits, um, specifically to aid impacted industries such as tourism, travel, and hospitality. Um, negative economic impact, we can assist households, support for small businesses, um, and hospitality sectors. Some of the items that we are promoting or asking for funding under this category include the RAD card program. The RAD card program is essentially, and we did discuss this a little bit before, it's essentially a app-based program. So if somebody wanted to participate in this program, they would download an app to either their iPhone or whatever type of um, smartphone that they have. 
the app would then allow that person to go to Los Banos. It would show them all the different small businesses that are participating and where the funding can be spent. If they put $50 on their card, then they would be matched an additional $50. So instead of having $50 to spend at a store downtown, they would now have $100 to spend at the store downtown. One of the benefits of this card is that it has immediate spending impact. Um, you do not have to spend the entire $100 at one store. So you can, you can spend $50 at one store, you can spend $50 at another participating store. Um, you are allowed to buy the card in $25 increments. So it's $25, $50, $75, up to $100, and you will be matched up to $100. Um, it does have a long-term benefit to small businesses. So this makes people more aware of businesses that maybe they didn't know were there before. And so now they realize that it's there and now maybe they want to go back um, and spend more money at that business. So that is okay. one of the um, I other questions to the council tonight is to Ms. commit. Lohan, yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, I yeah. have a question in regards to the RAD card program. You said uh, spending the money downtown. Is this for any business, whether it's downtown or on Pacheco Boulevard, uh, if they apply to be in this program, the money can be spent there? That's correct. We set okay. the parameters to um, the type of businesses that it is. So I just mentioned downtown as an example. I'm sorry, but yes, we can spend it. Um, Thank you. Thank you. It's up to the business to participate. So if the, the business would like to participate, then yes, it would be citywide. And it limits um, spending to the city of Los Banos. So when you go on the app, it'll show you the stores that participate, but you have a special code for So if if I were to buy money in both Newman, Lodi, Los Banos, I would have a different scan for each city to ensure that the money that Newman gave me isn't being spent in Los Banos and that my Los Banos funding isn't being spent someplace else. So it's very specific to the town that's here. It can only be spent in our town with our participating um, vendors. And it is monitored outside. Um, they do all the monitoring, they pay the, they pay the businesses, and then we get a reporting on how the money is spent. So the proposal is to give 1.5, or I'm sorry, to, to fund this for $1 million. Ken, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, Mr. Lambert? So uh, for per individual that, for each program, uh, you said it was up to $100. They run out of that $100. Are they able to buy back into it again? No. It's just one time uh, buy per person? Yes, that is correct. And um, I was going to check with the red part if this program is um, funded to see if, that, if, if that's something maybe the city could opt out of if we wanted to allow them to do it more. But the way the program is run right now, it's a $100 limit. So... You spend $100 of your own money, you get $100 of the ARPA funding. So the proposal is to fund this program up to a million dollars. Um, and the hope is to do it in either 250 or 500,000 increments. This way it ensures us that if the program is successful, we can fund, we can add more funding to it. If it is not successful, after the first two hundred and fifty or five hundred thousand dollars, we can back out of the program and not continue on. So it gives us a little bit of flexibility as to whether or not we want to continue with the program. Um, the second proposed amount is to invest in technology and equipment. One of the allowable uh, categories under Respond to Public Health Emergency is to allow um, public safety to purchase things that help basically, um, or I guess effectively respond to the increase in, in crime and violence because of COVID. So it allows us to buy technology um, to, to help respond to this. So what we're asking for is $100,000 at this point in time. Um, of course, I'm sure the chief would be happy if the council wanted to provide more, he can always use more technology and there's uh, quite a few items that fit in this category. But our ask for tonight is $100,000 and that's to purchase equipment 
to conduct exams on electronic devices. Uh, the third bullet point here is to invest in parks on the qualified census tracks. So again, as I mentioned, um, within the categories themselves, they become a little bit more restrictive. So ARPA funding does allow for us to invest in parks, um, public plazas, and other public outdoor recreation spaces. However, in order to do so, it has to be in the qualified census tract. And so let me, um, let me switch my screens quickly so I can share with council what the qualified census tract is, just to give you a better idea of what we're talking about. So you should see a map of the city now, and the red area is what is considered the qualified census tract. So we have Badger Flat here, um, bordered by Pacheco, Mercy Springs, and then it cuts across Wilmot, up North Street, and across Overland. Everything that's in the red area is considered, considered the qualified census tract. So the ask tonight is to, um, it's for $200,000 and that's to help either replace um, the existing park equipment that's along the rail trail. So we have fitness equipment down the rail trail now. So it's to either replace that equipment with new equipment or to add additional equipment um, to that. And that's a $200,000 ask. Let me... Go back to my presentation here. Sorry, bear with me, please. Upgrades to city owned property is also something that's allowable under um, this category. And what, what is allowable is anything that's considered um, a jail area is allowable. We're not asking anything for like the jail area because everybody's cramped in there. However, we might come back and ask for the new future um, station. But what the ask is tonight is upgrades to city owned property and it has to do with the HVAC systems. So we can go through the city, look whose HVAC systems are poor and then replace them accordingly. So obviously it filters the air, it's better for breathing, it's better when we're packing everybody in a workspace for the, the flow. Um, the next one is the employee COVID testing program. So as of right now, we are not required to um, test or make sure everybody has a vaccine. However, I'm sure you're all aware that not only have the feds, you know, tried to make this mandatory, but if Cal OSHA implements that the city has to mandatory test to allow employees to come to work, that cost would need to come from someplace. We did some research because the school district is currently doing it. And preliminary estimates are that it would cost us over a million dollars to do this for a year. So we are asking to allocate $1.5 million um, potentially for city employees to be tested weekly um, in lieu of having a vaccination. And then also homeless assistant program. So as I mentioned, we do have Project Room Key and we do have temporary um, shelter that is uh, funded through April. However, this is in addition to that, this is people that maybe don't fit into that temporary shelter. And this is so the city has their own response to COVID. It's a small ask, it's $100,000. And the intent is basically um, hotel vouchers, to give hotel vouchers to somebody who may need to get off of the streets to recover from COVID or to not be exposed to COVID. And I know this is a lot of information. Um, we do have four different categories to go through. Um, I did, now I have the camera view. I wasn't seeing the camera view before. So if you raise your hand, I will be able to stop and answer your questions. So moving on to category two, this is, uh, yes, Ken? Mr. Lambert, I see Mr. Lambert's hand up. Uh, just to follow up on that question earlier, um, is it possible that this can be changed per person? If, you know, I mean, uh, or, or is it just gonna be limited to one person? What, or oh, one, the, one time, the one time uh, use up to $100. Oh, on the RAD card program? Yeah. So right now, yes, it's limited to, to one person, one use. You can get up to $100. So if you decide to do $50 and get your $50, you can come back and get $50 later, but only up to $100. Okay. 
Okay. The only reason why I ask that is I, I we only get a hundred people that ask for it, you know, throughout our city that want to, you know, uh, pr uh, participate in this program. You know, uh, it's uh, but they may want to continue to participate in the program if nobody else is participating. I, I just wanted to see if that was able to be changed, just in case. It was. It's something that I could reach out to the administration of the Red Creek program, um, but I'm not aware of any other agency that allows that. So I, I'm not sure that they do. But I will double check if we decide to participate in the program. I do have to bring. This is just a. Um, workshop for everybody to give them ideas on what we should spend the money on. Um, I am asking for direction tonight on some of the things that you would like to see come forward. So if this is one of the things that you would like to see come forward, then I will have more information when I bring it back to council for approval. Okay, thank you. So and that'll be one of the items, Kim, that I will um, make sure to have the answer for you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Lewis. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Quick question on the RAD card, uh, Sonia. Uh, you can buy up to $100 uh, and get a match for $100. So uh, if someone's buying that card, do they have to designate where they're going to spend it or can you spend it? You know, I, I heard you say you can spend money at one store or another, but uh, you don't have to designate how much is going to be spent at any store until you make that purchase. Am I correct? No, it's, you're right. It's it's basically like a gift card. You okay. can get a barcode to scan. And if I want to go spend fifteen dollars in one store and seventy five dollars in the next, I can I can definitely do that. Okay. Um, okay. You don't have to spend it all in one day. Uh, there, as of right now, there is no limit. It wouldn't expire. So you have time to go, you know, out and do all your shopping, and it wouldn't expire. I have one from a different community that I that I visited one time and I still have, you know, a few books sitting on there and I probably won't go back until I'm ready to do Christmas shopping. So it's out there ready for me to use. Thank you very much. And it works in both restaurants. Um, some of the businesses, in fact, if you want a sneak peek, some of the businesses um, are anywhere from a boutique jewelry store to clothing stores, restaurants. Um, I, I honestly picked up wine with it in Lodi. Um, it has a wide variety of uses. So um, it's just up to the store and whether or not they want to to participate. I've had I've had lunch on it, you know, so it's it's a, a vast variety of what uh, business wants to participate. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Yamas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Thank you for that presentation, uh, Ms. Williams. Uh, I had a question regarding uh, which stores or is there a restriction on which stores can participate and which stores cannot? So yes, we would put the restriction on what stores can participate and um, we would limit it to small businesses. So obviously stores like Target, Walmart, you know, the big box stores like that, they wouldn't be able to participate. We can do it um, by the number of employees that they have. We can do it by revenues. There's, we could just do it by parameters of the city. There's a lot of different options um, that we are allowed to set to ensure. Now, most communities have um, a vibrant downtown where it's almost limited to the downtown area. But as I mentioned, I've used the card in Lodi and Lodi is pretty much spread out everywhere. Um, and I've used it all over the same as the city of Turlock. They have it in both their downtown area and outside of the downtown area. So it's, it's up to the council and how they want to set the boundaries. But uh, RAD card's intentions are not to include big box stores. Very good. Th thank you very much. I was concerned about that. So that uh, puts my concerns to rest. Second question I have uh, would be, uh, we're concerned with this program would be that uh, some businesses were just starting off and people weren't aware of them. Uh, they were very negatively impacted by it. My concern is that there will be a congregation to a select number of stores. And the, if the intent here is to help the entire business community that was affected. And so again, you know, you, you can't control where people will buy, but generally people will will return to the same stores. And, and I'm just uh, concerned that some of the businesses out there may not benefit from this program where the intent or the spirit of the law is to 
help all the businesses that were impacted by COVID. So I'm not sure how we can mitigate or address that. So the reason why I proposed this program versus a small business assistant type of program is because we did try that with the CARES funding. We set aside $50,000. Of course, we didn't have this much funding when we had CARES, but we did set aside $50,000 in funding for small business assistance. There are a lot of restrictions, as I've mentioned, um, to the program. And one of the things that happened in CARES is they have to fill out an application and they have to prove that they've been impacted by COVID. I believe that I received five to seven applications and I awarded three, um, three grants in the amount of $250 each. So I didn't feel like it was extremely impactful. Um, I didn't get the response I was hoping for. That is also an allowable program here in ARPA, but because it has the same restrictions as far as a business having to provide me a profit and loss statement. You know, they have to prove that they have a business license, which obviously we can look up, but that they have all the permits that go along with that. And there's a lot of caveats that go into it, but I didn't think that we would get the response because of course we've tried to do this before. Um, also researching this, I've noticed that a lot of communities are sidestepping it for the same reason. And I put more, more efforts into this because it's more of a um, gift card program. A lot of communities were having a lot of success with the, um, the gift card program, specifically the RAD program. Um, communities started out with private funding. So they had sponsors when this first started in Modesto. Uh, they had private sponsors that started the program. And then they went on to use CARES funding to do it and it's so successful that they re-upped it again with ARPA funding. And so I know that the communities are different, but this, this goes anywhere from the city of Newman utilizing it, Oakdale, Turlock, Modesto, so small communities and large communities who have continued to revamp the funding that they're putting in there because of the success they've had found. And unfortunately, it doesn't touch everybody, but um, you know we could do our best to assist the RAD people in uh, communicating to businesses that they should participate. When you go to the app itself, you see a listing of all the businesses there. So even if you're not aware that business exists, you can click on it, you can find where that business is and maybe it leads you to someplace new. So I, I don't know if there's a way for us to touch everybody because of the restrictions. I felt um, that this was more beneficial than other programs. Okay, but I'm happy to discuss any other thoughts that council may have. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I think I think that Mr. Lambert, and then back to Ms. Lewis. I believe that's the order. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hey, Sonia, um, the procedure for the businesses uh, to uh, participate have we already come about how we're going to uh, present this to the businesses, or or is that something we're going to discuss also? The, the Rag Park program. Yes, ma'am. So the Rag Park program. Um, we would discuss how it is being presented, but it is presented completely by by the administration of the Radford program. So they um, they handle everything. They have a website. They have the app page. They do the community outreach. They take care of everything for us. So that so that, 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 that would be so that'll actually be where the business would actually go and uh, sign up to be on that program. Correct. That is correct, and that's where they they have an app as well that when the payment's being made, it goes to whatever type of device that, that the business has, um, whether they have an iPad, a phone, they have options on how they want to, to be able to scan that person's code. Um, but Radcard takes care of everything for that and the city does not um, have to worry about that. Okay. But we can, in addition to them doing that, make sure that we advertise it on our Facebook pages you know, point them in the right direction. So gotcha. we'll do our best to work with them um, if the city does elect to do this to make sure most businesses are aware of what is happening. All right, thank you so much, Sonny. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'm understanding is this, this RAD card program has a lot fewer limitations, has a better, su better success rate in getting money back into businesses that were affected, correct? In other communities, yes, it has been very successful. Right. And like I said, the reason I did ask for up to spend up to a million dollars, but, you know, I'm well aware that it might not work in our community. So, I, I, you know, the thought was to do it in smaller increments 
we'll feed them 250 or 500,000 and if it works, then we'll give them a little bit more money. Because obviously if it's working, then it is helping um, the community on an ongoing basis. So even if they only spend $100 in the store today, maybe they come back and spend $100 of their own money because you know they had a good experience or they found good products or they enjoyed the food, whatever mm -hmm. the situation may be. Well, very good. I see Mr. Yamas's hand up again. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, final thought here is, uh, so you would be able to have real-time uh, data um, response from where it's happening. So then you, you would see, okay, we're having 10 of the 75 businesses that have the most uh, benefit from this. And so you would be able to adjust or respond or do something to try to, again, to, to spread the wealth, if you will, correct? Correct. So if we start out small, if we start out $250,000 and in the first month it's gone and I'm going to be running to council and saying, hey, hey, it worked and you gave me up to a million, so I'm going to replenish it right away. But if it's not working, I'm going to say, okay, let's, you know, I don't want that million dollars after all. Let's go ahead and reassess what we're doing here, maybe find a different program, you know, something a little bit more creative, maybe even hold a workshop for small businesses to see what's going to work for you. Are you willing to do these applications type of things? But again, during my research, this seems to be a very beneficial program to a lot of communities in our area. Fantastic. And I feel that once it hits us, Merced County, we'll probably take it on as a whole. Fantastic. Looks like you, you've done your research and <laughs> you are the resident expert. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. So moving to the category two, premium pay. Um, premium pay category is to respond to workers performing essential work during COVID. Um, this is basically businesses, the city hall that didn't close down, the police officers fire. Um, if you remember council approved premium pay, it was a three-year plan. The increments were different depending on uh, the hiring date of employees. So it was $4,800 for employees that were hired before January. 2021, $2,400 for employees hired after that, and $1,200 for employees, uh, part time employees. And um, this is obviously because everybody had to be here, whether it was at City Hall, whether it was in the fire department, public works, police responding to COVID, making sure people's water was still on, getting new services, you know. Um, so we, we did this program, and it's a three year program. The total amount that has already been allocated to this is $1.7 million. We may come in under this amount because as employees change, then, you know, the categories would drop down um, or we have fewer employees, perhaps it'll drop down. So we may spend up to 1.7, but it will not, it will not be more than 1.7. Category three, this is the big one. This is the fun. Um, formula that I put in the staff report that I'm, I'm sure was fun and confusing, but basically what this says is that recipients may use funds to replace lost revenue. The Treasury Department has very specific methodology to calculate lost revenue, and we have to identify based on their calculations if we have a, a shortfall or not. If we did have a shortfall, we would have had a broad latitude to use in funding and it would have been made all of our lives so much easier, but unfortunately we're not there. Instead, we're here at this chart. And what this chart tells us is that our counterfactual revenue or what we're saying we should have got in the year of COVID. So this is not just general fund revenue, this is all general revenue. So whatever uh, the state requires to be general revenue, which unfortunately excludes things like water bills, because we should control great loss in um, utility billing, but it excludes water. Um, it excludes other things like debt services and things that don't really factor in. But what it does include are, is sales tax revenue, property tax revenue, not only sales tax for Regular sales tax, but it includes Measure H, it includes Measure P. Um, one of the reasons why 
we are not showing a loss in revenue, it's because of the timing of Measure H. Measure H started in 2019, and um, it included three months. But then the next year, which counts our revenue, included the whole year. And so unfortunately, because of that, I mean, obviously we're very thankful and grateful for Measure H, and it has impacted the community in a positive way. It's just hurting us now in this area. But we're not going to complain about it because we'll find other ways to spend the money. So based on Measure H and the fact that our permitting process didn't slow down any during COVID, we are showing that our actual revenue was $57 million and our counterfactual revenue, which is basically what we should have made, being $56.4 million. So we don't have a loss here and we don't qualify for this. The next year, which they do this on a calendar year instead of our fiscal year, but it still works out. The next year's counterfactual revenue, which is an increase of 9.6% based on the last three years actual increase to revenue. Um, we can have revenue of $61.8 million. My estimate is that we're going to finish the year at $62 million, which again would mean that we don't qualify. However, we haven't allocated all the funding. Um, we have time after the end of the year to go back and calculate and put, plug in the actuals and see if we are. And even if we only qualify for $500,000, then it'll staff will recommend to council that yes, let's put that $500,000 aside because as I mentioned before, it's a lot less restrictive as to what we could do with the money. Um, this counterfactual revenue is a consistent increase of the 9.54%. And so each year we'll go back and we'll plug in our actual revenues based on that amount. And at any given time, if the money has not yet been allocated, then council will still have the ability to allocate any loss that we might come up with. So that's just a placeholder. Um, one of the reasons why we're not, we're not in a rush to allocate the money is just to to keep a, a watch on this to see if it changes. Also, one of the reasons to keep a watch on it is we're still working off the interim final rule. The Department of Treasury has not released its findings on comments. Um, several cities commented, uh, they're in the same situation as we are with our measure H. And so several cities have commented to the Department of Treasury, is there a better way to handle this? So we're waiting on comments like that and we're waiting for the Department of Treasury to release the final rule. There is a possibility, even though it might be a slight possibility, that maybe they can change the calculation a little bit to allow for things like measure H. Um, and so that was anticipated to be released at the end of September of this year. It didn't happen. Uh, one of the reasons why they pushed back the reporting is because it didn't happen. So we're still waiting for responses to our comments. Hopefully we get them and hopefully it changes this number from zero and does allow for us to have a loss. So we'll keep council updated on that. And then the fourth and final category is to invest in infrastructure. The infrastructure that we are allowed to invest in is limited to um, water, wastewater and broadband and within those limitations or additional limitations. So uh, we could do water treatment, transmission and distribution, rehabilitation, the, uh, decontamination, wastewater. Some of the projects we could do is construction of treatment works, um, efficiency, efficiency and reuse matters. And then broadband is very restrictive in the sense of it tells us exactly what the speeds, the download speeds, the upload speeds need to be for broadband. Um, and that is restricted to either unserved or underserved households or businesses. So again, those are very limited. We do have it as a point of discussion tonight. And uh, Nicole, our interim public works director is looking into programs that we have in both water and wastewater um, that may apply. So these are things that we can bring back to council in the future if we feel that we have a project that fits into it. And if council shows concern about wanting you know, to maybe invest some of the funds in, in that direction. So as a summary, the proposed uses tonight, and again, this is just for, for uh, council to give staff direction. Yes, no, we want to do this and us to bring back at a later date. I'm not asking you to make any final decisions tonight, but just direction. 
premium pay is 1.7 million. That is already allotted. So that's on the summary just to give you a dollar amount. Um, and then what falls under category one or the public health emergency category, again, is the RAD card up to a million dollars. Um, equipment and technology, and again, this is police equipment um, and technology in response to the rise in, in crime and violence. Invest in parks, in this case, outdoor fitness, $200,000. Invest in HVAC VAC system upgrades for $250,000. Potential COVID testing, so if we do uh, allocate this money, it's just a holding spot. If Calosha doesn't require it, then obviously we'd come back to council and have you reallocate the money. And in homeless assistance, $100,000. That leaves us an unallocated balance. Basically, we still have to decide what we want to do with our other $4.9 million. Again, I mentioned um, some of the things that we can do are water infrastructure, wastewater infrastructure, broadband, and then I'm happy to talk about any alternative projects or suggestions um, that council might have. In fact, I think that's a good time to do it. So maybe we can get a little bit of feedback on what is proposed here tonight, what you council would like to see move forward, if any of these items. Okay, thank you, Ms. Williams. What I'm gonna do now is uh, we have a number of people in the public that would like to comment. And so if you would raise your hand, if you would like to comment at this time um, on the ARP funding, I'll look for raised hands here and, and, and call upon you if you're still there with us there. Um, so I see uh, Ms. Valadeo has opened her camera. Uh, she'd like to speak. Go, go ahead and uh, <clears throat> unmute there if you would, uh, Dana. Well, I was going to let Lori go first. But oh, I I'm sorry. Go. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, there's, uh, I see, I see a hand raised. So, uh, um, Lori, are you, are, are you going to go? Sure. Do you want to speak? Yes. Okay, very good. All right. So, go ahead, Ms. Bellotti. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Okay, you know, I didn't respond to the city survey because when I read it, I felt it didn't give anyone a chance to address the need for our residents for recreational amenities. And there really wasn't a place for that on there. I would like to propose that a portion of the ARPA funds go towards building public pickleball courts in Los Banos. This may seem like a trivial request compared to the problems we need to solve in Los Banos, but recreation for Los Banos residents should be a consideration in the big picture. If you look at the amenities Las Banas has to keep our residents healthy and happy, you'll see that we don't have a lot in our town. Please consider the ways that access to public pickleball courts could help many of our community residents recover from this pandemic. I want to refer to the ARPA document because I read it after I read this, after I tried to do the survey, and maybe you can under, better understand my rationale. Um, there's um, under the temporary nature of APRA funds, there's a section that says investment in critical infrastructure is particularly well suited use of ARPA funds because it is a non recurring expenditure that can be targeted to strategically important long term assets that provide benefits over many years. However, care should be taken to assess any ongoing operating costs that may be associated with the project. Pickleball courts are, um, once they're built, they're a non-recurring expenditure. They're taken care of by the people who are using them. And there's also um, a place that would be number three, respond to the public health emergency or associated negative impacts. Um, I heard it, down under uh, number C, Letter C, I heard something mentioned about a fitness track on the rail trail. Um, and that was under investments in parks in the qualified census track. Programs and services designed to build stronger neighborhoods and communities to address health disparities. Investments in parks may be responsive to the needs of impacted communities by promoting outdoor recreation to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. The funds will be used to build an outdoor fitness court. 
This is where I feel pickleball courts would be a very good use of extra funds from ARPA because people, it's going to help the help people's health and activity level and social um, fitness in our in our town, and we really need that. So I, I would like to propose that the AR a portion of the funds go towards building public pickleball courts. Please consider the need for people to become active and social after this devastating pandemic. Also consider how the presence of public pickleball courts would increase business in our shops, restaurants, and hotels. Uh, pickleball courts, active pickleball courts in the, I think you call it qualified census tract, um, could also prevent crime in that in the area. And so that, that's my rationale for thinking about recreation and not just pickleball, but other recreation amenities, spending a portion of these funds for that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bellotti. And nothing any citizen ever brings to this council is ever trivial. So whatever anyone wants to bring, you bring, because we want to know. Um, Mr. Lieb's hand was up next, I believe. Yes, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, and I like your background. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so most of you know me, but for the record, uh, my name is Gene Lieb, and I'm the uh, former publisher of the Enterprise for the past 20 years. And um, there's a new term in our uh, world. It's called news desert. And currently, Los Panos is a news desert, which is a community with limited access to the sort of credible and comprehensive community news and information that feeds democracy at the grassroots level. A newspaper is a reflection of the community it serves. Currently, the enterprise is not serving our community well. I think most of you can attest to that because you've lived in Los Angeles long enough. If you've seen the enterprise now compared to what it was years ago, I think you would agree that it is not the same newspaper. It is not serving the public well. And within a few months, the current enterprise as we know it today will probably be closed and not exist at all. Um, it is um, not something that the current owner uh, owning company is going to keep and it will go by the wayside like most community newspapers um, that do not uh, cover local news. So my plan is to recreate the enterprise and bring back local, unbiased, fact-based, attributable Los Banos community journalism where all sides of issues are presented and the public can decide who or what they want to believe. And on this call, um, there's a gentleman named Hank Vanderveen. So Hank and I worked at uh, with McClatchy. Hank left McClatchy years ago, and he now owns uh, 209 Multimedia. 209 Multimedia uh, owns um, eight community newspapers, Mantega Bulletin, Turlock Journal, Oakdale Leader, and um, he recently purchased the Gustine Standard and the Newman Westside Index. And when he did that, uh, he worked with the uh, both city councils uh, for the city of Newman and the city of Gustine. And they worked out a financial agreement uh, whereby um, money can be, um, ARPA money was used to help uh, with the startup and operational cost um, of, of the newspapers. And um, so what I am proposing is that um, we create a new business, a new company, Hank and I, and uh, we're requesting ARPA funds uh, to help with the operational capital since accounts receivables are anticipated to lag behind operational expenditures. The uh, enterprise currently has a masthead, that is, that's, that's the name, and other than the name, it has nothing else. Um, the the um, owners uh, in 2020 um, came in, you know, told me that they were closing the office here in Los Banos and they were relieving me of my position. They eliminated my position due to COVID. They said we could, they could no longer operate given the atmosphere that COVID was causing. Um, and um, I want to bring that back uh, by having um, a reputable newspaper with quality journalism, um, it will enhance every aspect of the city that you guys are talking about right now 
and will help educate the public uh, so they know what's happening in town. Ever since I was relieved of my duties, I talk to people uh, sometimes every day on the street asking me uh, uh, what's happening. They have no clue what's happening in town. And a newspaper does that. It keeps everyone educated and it, it covers the good and the bad, not just the sensational uh, headlines, but it covers the chicken barbecues and everything else. Um, many of which I'm still doing right now on my own and putting it on my own Facebook page. Uh, it'd be much better if I had an audience that could see it um, in print and, and online as well. Um, and Hank is here as well on the call if you have any questions. Mr. Lieb, I had a question. Uh, you said that uh, you were concerned that you wouldn't, uh, that uh, there'd be a, a problem with uh, generating ongoing operational money, um, or is that what I heard? So when you, yeah, so the, the way you fund a newspaper is through advertising dollars, and um, those are businesses that buy ads into the paper, and, um, but it's like the chicken and the egg. So you have to have something that people will see and like, and then they'll buy into it. Um, so I have to create recreate an enterprise that and, and prove to the readers that um you know there's actual news and i'm actually going to publish real news and then and then uh they'll start buying ads in the paper but there's a period of time there that where a lag that um i'm going to need some help in order to get that up and running Start up fun. okay um do you have any idea of how much um you, you would be asking for? Is that something you want to say to discuss with staff if we... We can discuss that with staff, yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's negotiable. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's, a, there's, there's currently a, a plan that the city of Newman and Gustine um, uh, a, a, a approved with Hank that uh, we could use as a, as a guide. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I see Ms. Lewis has her hand up. I imagine she has a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to know... Uh, approximately what they're asking for tonight. I, I don't think that this council should be uh, not privy to hear that information. So yes, uh, if the council decides to move forward with something like this, uh, certainly that would be worked out with staff, but I wanna hear the numbers tonight. Okay, well, the, the plan that uh, Newman and Gustine worked on, it was a three prong plan. So it, it included um, ARPA money, it included a no interest loan, and it included a commitment of, um, of ads, public notices, because the city does publish um, their own public notices. So it was, it was the dollar amounts um, uh, totaled uh, $165,000 over six months. What was the ARPA portion? Uh, ARPA portion was 90,000. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you. Um, Ms. Valadeo. Good evening. My name is Dana Valadeo, and I am a retired teacher here in Los Banos and a third generation Los Banos person. Um, I just kind of want to repeat some of the things that Lori Bellotti said about recreation in Los Banos. COVID 19 has definitely put a toll on people's health. People have stayed inside for over a year, and that is causing oh, their health. Interrupt real quick. We're getting some feedback. Are you? Do you have two devices on? Yeah, she's gonna move. Hold on. Yeah, because it's like screeching. I don't know if anybody okay. else hears. Yeah, it. I was picking up. Sorry. That's okay. I heard it too. I just didn't know if you could hear it. <laughs> um. Thank you. COVID-19 has put a toll on many people, and I know that when Lori and I are starting to look at different ways to find funding to put pickleball courts in, we know how important um, the health and recreation of the people of Los Banos are, and the CDC right now is saying that anything you can do outside is probably going to benefit the people and keep them safe from COVID-19. I know that these um, ARPA funds um, can be used for parks and recreation. So we'd like to see you consider maybe putting that in just because we have 90 members in our pickleball group 
group who play pickleball. And on average, we have 30 out there a day. So, you know, I'm thinking of your exercise track, and I don't know how many people use that exercise track in a day, but I know there are dozens of people who play pickleball every day, and it would be just outstanding if we had some public courts for them to play in and keep that activity. I know during COVID, I'm lucky enough to have a pickleball court at my house, so I wasn't having to play in a group, and I can go out with my husband and hit the ball back and forth, and I don't know what I would have done without that um, health factor for me to be able to stay in shape and stay sane and not be inside my house all the time. I just know that pickleball courts will not only provide the health of the people of Los Banas, but also for Los Banas in many other ways. I attend many different avenues of playing pickleball in different towns and many towns have pickleball courts and I know it brings people into town that spend money in town. And I know this is not about um, this funding, but if we had public courts, we'd probably be able to encourage people from other towns to come. I also know we just went to St. George, Utah and all over that town. I think it's one of the fastest growing cities right now in the United States. And when they're building their developments, they have giant posters that read pickleball courts being built. And that attracts people to go in and move there. So if you've not heard of pickleball, it is up and coming. And I just want Los Banas to be one of those places because I think we're going to lose um, the momentum if we don't decide, hey, this is something that would, would benefit our town and the health and safety of our community. Thank you. Thank you. So do, do does the city presently have any pickleball courts at all? Well, we have two at the community center that are inside that were closed for a year due to COVID. Um, so there's two there and that's where we um, started out. And sometimes you wait 30 minutes just to get into a game because there's so many people waiting because there's four people on a court. There's also three painted courts out um, on Pioneer Road, but we compete with the uh, Basketball players and basketballs also very big in this town, which is wonderful to see the kids out there. And usually they're pretty friendly. And um, we are usually out there first because we're early birds and we'll usually scoot over and let them have a court. But lately when I drive by, I see a lot of people playing basketball out there. So we have two at the community center and three painted lines out at Pioneer Court. But you have to have your own nets to be able to play out there. OK, thank you. Um... Uh, Ms. Mallory? I have two comments that I need to read into the record. I just didn't want that to get missed. Okay, very good. Um, I don't see any other hands raised at this time, so go ahead and read those now, please. Okay, the first comment, it says, City Council members, I understand that there are funds available through the American Rescue Plan Act. I would love to see some of the funds go to the arts, in Los Banas, a family concert series in the Henry Miller Plaza would be wonderful and perfect for the citizens of Los Banas. Fresh air and music would benefit all. Music can relax the mind, energize the body, and even help people better manage pain. It reduces anxiety and stress, and who doesn't need that? Let's plant some concerts in the plaza. Thank you, Cindy Roloffs. Um, the next comment. The city of Los Banas has asked for community input in regards to the American Rescue Plan funding. The following I hope you would consider for the mental and physical health of the members of our community. I would like to refer to the guiding principles for use of ARPA funds as stated. Investment in critical infrastructure is particularly well-suited use of ARPA funds because it is non-reoccurring expenditure that can be targeted to strategically important long-term assets that provide benefits over many years. Operating and maintenance costs for pickleball facility would be minimum. Once constructed, there would be very little to take care of. The players using the courts would be responsible 
for the cleanup and monitoring. Pickleball courts would bring revenue into our town if the courts are placed in a central location, such as the rail trail area, locals and visitors alike would use our shops, restaurants and hotels. We are a central location in the Valley and would be a big draw for people coming to play. Our city continues to grow and along with that growth, we need to provide more recreation opportunities for our citizens. I feel Las Banas has fallen behind in providing outlets for activities and pickleball courts would be one of the best ways you could fill a void that our city currently has. Pickleball is played by people of all ages and backgrounds. In addition, pickleball is an outdoor activity which is appropriate for mitigating the spread of COVID-19. Respectfully submitted, Tom Bellotti. Thank you, Ms. Mallon. So um, we have this evening from what I'm seeing from the public, uh, Pickleball, uh, the newspaper, and the outdoor concert series. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna go to uh, council and ask each council member to, uh, if you would comment on staff's recommendations and public recommendations, which of those support uh, you'd like to see us pursue. Um, so I'll start with Mr. Jones. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Okay, so I'm pulling up my list here. Um, So as far as equipment and technology, is that hundred grand? Is it just for PD, or is that being uh, split with fire department? Does the fire department need anything as well, Sonia? So it's based on the response to crime and violence, so it's not for the fire department; it's strictly for police. Okay. Okay. And then, as far as investing in parks, what are our limitations in there? Can we invest more in some equipment on the rail trail? it's probably just going to fall apart like the last stuff. It just said, I don't know if it's really getting used or if it's really vital. Um, can we invest in uh, more of the infrastructure aspect of some of these uh, recreation locations? Because let's, uh, let's just face, face it. If, if we're going to put pickleball courts in at some point down the road, hopefully sooner than later, we're, we're going to probably need bathrooms. We're going to need a parking lot. We're going to need curb gutter, lighting, things like that. You know, the way I see it, to be all, all honest, a lot of times with recreational activities, they go in trance, whether they last five years, 10 years, 50 years. But if we have the infrastructure in there, we can always wipe the surface clean and put a different recreation on there. So I'm curious on how much of that we can use for some of the vital costly infrastructure. So on the recreation um, we can make adjustments to Basically, it could be investments in parks and public plazas. It's pretty general, but where it's not general is the communities that we can do it in. And again, I'm trying to, I closed out my map. So um, we do not have a lot of parks that are in the, those areas. Um, can you all see my map now? Okay, so the red area is where we're limited due to doing these investments in parks and public plazas. So, um, it de does include the rail trail. It does include Colorado um, Park and a couple of the other small parks. Um, Peach Park, is that what it's called? Peach Park. Um, what else is over there? So I was kind of more thinking kind of down on one of our properties. We're going to plan on getting maybe something on the rail trail somewhere where it might make the most sense on there since that land does need to be developed. We can't use it for housing. It so seems like... A, recreational activity probably would make the most sense on that land because I think we'd have the less restrictions but uh, and we are also yeah, limited to what we own on that land so unless we're willing we to are. purchase it because we don't own all of it outright some of it is for governmental use and some of it is to be resold so if for instance we decided we wanted to put a pickleball court on the rail trail we would have to have a big enough area and you know what, let me see if I have that PowerPoint. Um, I brought it up when we were talking about this. Okay, let me, let me share this screen with you. So this is, um, if you guys remember, 
uh, when we split out the parcels, A is where the rail trail goes along by Henry Miller Plaza. Henry Miller Plaza and the area adjacent to it on the corner of 7th and H Street are governmental use. Um, that obviously is big enough for a pickleball area, but based on last week's council meeting, there's plans for it. Um, C is another large area, however, as an example, that's future development, which means that if the city were going to add any type of large project, they would first have to buy the land because we do have a reimbursement agreement with the different agencies and they are all entitled to a part of the proceeds from that. Um, moving down further on the rail trail, the same goes here. So the, this B area here is uh, governmental or um, future development and would have to be purchased. The rail trail itself is owned by the city. The workout equipment that's along here fits into these areas that are already pre-existing. Um, and just to show you another parcel, again, the city owns A and would not own B. So those are just some of the examples along the rail trail um, that in order to do too much on the rail trail, then it, it, it does start getting into the, the discussion of purchasing the, the, the property. Um, the would, other area- Will we be able to use these funds, these funds to be able to purchase some of that property no. for future recreation? We cannot. No, we can do it for infrastructure. We cannot do it to, to buy property. Okay, just for the infrastructure, the improvements on the property. Yes. Okay, so that's that's not an immediate fix then for. No. For so another here. park that is in that general area of the uh, QCT is Colorado Ballpark. Now, um, we did apply for a grant for that park. If the park comes through, I don't know that the grant completely covers the amount of money that we need. We may need additional funding, in which case ARPA can pick up the funding for Colorado because it falls in the QTP. Okay, I know one concern with Colorado ballpark is just the winds that pick up. It blows that wiffle ball all over the place. So if we are going to designate that area for pickleball, it just keep that in no, mind. No, I wasn't that. suggesting. I wasn't suggesting at all adding pickleball. Okay. In fact, I don't know that it will fit. I just mean the improvements that we already need to make to to follow Colorado to bring it up to date. So pickleball in general would be difficult based on our constraints that we have with this funding right now. We'd have to find alternative funding source. We would have it sounds to like figure out how to fit it in the uh, QCT. So in okay. order to do any type of park investment, it has to fit into that QCT. So it is limited there. Again, if we've qualified under revenue reimbursement, it would be a little bit more lenient, but we don't. So here we are trying to fit it into that red square. Okay. Well, I know, I know you staff, you guys are kind of tackling this and you guys, you guys get a lot bigger picture of what us as uh, council gets when uh, trying to select sites and, uh, you know, exclude certain sites. So um, I just, you know, it, it'd be nice at some point in the future and it probably, it may not be with this funding to be able to put uh, pickleball courts in. I'm not a pickleball player, but I do see, the advantage to Los Banos by having something pretty nice out there because let's face it, these pickleball players, they go crazy over this stuff and people come in or they travel all over to play these different tournaments. And I'm thinking these are people that might eat at a sandwich shop or stay at a hotel. And these are things where we might be able to collect extra tax on. So that's where I'm kind of looking at it as far as what can we make off this in the back end. Um, and I understand. And if council wants to give staff direction to see if it fits someplace in this red square, staff would be happy to do so. Okay. Uh, if there's something, I'll let you guys brainstorm on that. If there's something that may work and if you guys can reach out to the pitball community and ask them, you know, maybe some for some tips and things like that, because again, they know that sport really well where it may work and maybe see if there's any options out there that we might be able to do again. And, you know, I'm, I'm big on infrastructure, but if we don't have the land for it, that's that's another challenge. So, um, okay, so I guess that's on the recreation. Um, wastewater infrastructure, could we add in, say, sewer and water to, say, a business park that's not master planned yet? Can we start working on planning that with these dollars or it's only in those areas? No, the, the qualified census tract does not, the water projects do not need to fall in those areas. This is a does separate not. category. Um, okay, so, so one of our biggest issues for attracting big business is having utilities or having shovel-ready dirt. 
right? And that would include utilities up to the property or close to it. Now might be the time to start discussing that. So you want to do then, new, new business development? I think well, that the whole idea is try to try to use these monies, the monies that we're getting to, to attract future dollars. That's something that we've never really done before in Los Banos. We only look at things on the front end and not on the back end. I think as far as water systems go, new system development is allowable under ARPA. Um, okay. So it is something at one of the projects that we could look into for, for staff, new system. I think that's what you're getting at? New areas? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I, yeah, I don't I'm not talking about redoing water. what we have, but just adding in more water and sewer infrastructure, so it makes it that much easier for um, industry to come in. Yeah, we you know, if we designate like an industrial park, lean it towards COVID. I have to lean it towards COVID. So I could do my research <laughs> on that specifically, and when we bring a right. package back to council, present that. If yeah, yeah. The so of anything council. that we can do to help help you know in, increase what we have or strengthen it to where it makes it a little bit more attractive for biz, big business to come in. Okay. So broadband that looks like it's just limited to unserved and underserved. Can you emphasize on that a little bit? Yes. So it's basically so it is a duplicate effort. Um, the state is doing a lot of things with broadband. School districts also have got broadband money. So again, this is a duplicate effort. Um, as far as underserved homes, it's not really something that the city could reach out to because this is an ongoing cost. Putting the infrastructure in there doesn't make it give the ability for that homeowner maybe to you know actually continue to purchase it themselves. So I think it limits us there, especially with the high costs on the, the speeds that are required. Um, where we thought it would be more beneficial is an open type of area, like the community center, where maybe we offered the speeds there, and we have free Wi-Fi usage for people to be able to come in. So it's something that we're looking at, um, something that we're getting quotes on, not only the community center where people can go and use that broadband, but maybe someplace like City Hall that has a lobby area that if people need it to do it, they could come here as well. However, um, cost-wise and with the, the system that we're already putting in as far as our point to point and things like that, we don't know that it, um, it, it will actually benefit the community and it does have to benefit um, the community. So. It's an underserved area, the community center, and we would allow people that maybe don't have access otherwise to come in and access it free of charge. So it's something we're doing okay. for the research in. Initial research does not show that we have the ability to do what is required of us with the ARPA funds. And it's better left yeah, just, to <laughs> Yeah, it just doesn't sound really feasible and doesn't sound like yeah. it's going to help out the majority, especially if it doesn't cover, cover the commercial side too. So, okay. Uh, so my biggest things are um, water and waste infrastructure, improving that so we can try to attract, uh, whether it's adding on new or strengthening what we already have so we can attract big business or support big business. And then as far as invest in parks and outdoors, if we can take a look at, um, I'd really like to find a home for pickleball courts um, and something where, like I, like I mentioned, that if we have the location, we have the the infrastructure there to support it, parking lot, bathrooms, things like that, or if we're able to put that in at some point, the sport or the activity can always be changed out every 20, 30 years, depending on what the trends are and what the needs are. So that's how I kind of look at it. So kind of universal ground. So. And that's all. Everything Thank else, you. everything else looks good. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, you know, that uh, that thinking ahead on the recreations and preparing for changes, I think, is 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 very important. Excellent, um, Mr. Lambert. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I just want to ask a quick question. Maybe I didn't catch it earlier. How did we come up with that red area, Sonia? 
Um, so it's it's basically what we use uh, for our grants when we have the eligible areas. It's um, Stacy, can you help me out here? Are you on the line, Stacy? Where's she at? Maybe she's not here. So when we apply for, um, sorry, I'm right here. Oh, can you explain the map better for me, please? How how we how it came to be. Sure. So those are our low to moderate income census tract. That is one census tract. However, we are able to capture low moderate block groups in an, one additional census tract. So um, the main census tract is, um, I know it's listed on that map, I believe it's like 22.01. That is one full census tract. And then um, we're able to incorporate a couple of additional block groups um, that also qualify for low to moderate income. Um, and that is below the uh, Merced County median household income. Thank you. Okay, so that is the that is how we, this has been going on for a couple of years and we, for, we, we go off this map. So that's basically what we're going off now with that map. Yes. For, for our grant. Okay. Is it possible that could change in the future? Um, to explain um, how that data, where that data comes from, um, high, it, it probably isn't. Um, it, that, that particular census tract um, does meet those qualifications for low to moderate income, but um, going beyond those census tracts. So the, to explain, the city only has four census tracts. Um, going north um, has a higher disposable income, would not qualify. And then south um, definitely does not qualify. And then what it would then leave is uh, all of the residents east of uh, Highway 165, Mercy Springs Road, um, also with a higher disposable income. So it's not likely that those census tracts will expand in the future. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. Appreciate it, Stacey. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I'm kind of following uh, Council Member Jones's part. Recreation is one of my uh, deals, too, if we can look into possibly helping out with that infrastructure and the sewer and wastewater. That's something for the future for our uh, uh, infrastructure also. Um, now, just we'll get back to a couple of these, these others. Um, the HVAC system. Is that just for our, say, community center upgrades, the city hall upgrades? So, yes, uh, it would be specific to city buildings city so building. we would go through city buildings that well uh community center actually has a new one so they wouldn't and we wouldn't look at the pd because they're moving so it would most likely be city hall and then we would check some outlying other buildings like public works so did buildings. we do any did, did we do any work this last year for any improvements for that sonia i don't remember not not at city hall um the community center had some issues um, with theirs, and so it was replaced. I, they have several out there, um, but they were upgraded because of the, the issues that they were having. And that we are able to take this and replenish that to what we have. No, we can't, we can't go back. We could just go forward with the new upgrades. Yes. Okay, that's the only questions I had. Um, Anything that we can look into possibly doing with the recreation, um, the uh, with the red card, uh, I, you know, I, I see this as probably one of our biggest. I think we need to push forward for uh, for sure. Um, oh, right now that's all I have. If I have another question, I'll come back to you after a while. But thank, thank you, thank you, Mr. Lambert. Thanks thank on you, you. So much. Uh, Ms. Lewis. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have just a couple of things. Uh, I'm definitely, you know, in favor of the RAD card. I, I, 
I think that we, I don't know if we can use part of that money for getting out advertisement to let people know that this is available to be used in the community because certainly there is a, a gain for the person purchasing the card as well as the merchant where the card is going to be used. So it's a win-win situation all the way around. Um, the wastewater treatment, uh, I'm not sure if there's anything at our plant area that uh, we can use this money for enhancement on. And certainly if there is, uh, as, especially as our community grows, I, I think we're gonna uh, at some point have to build a plant uh, rather than using the system uh, that we're currently used uh, to uh, filter waste treatment. But um, whatever we can use to enhance our waste treatment uh, from this federal money that we received, I, I would like to see that happen. Um, broadband, there was only $100,000 allocated for that. Um, and there was talk about underserved and there were two categories that, that I think council members Underserved and underserved, and we actually didn't allocate anything. Right, but there was also under the two categories you mentioned, but there was a third category, which was businesses downtown. So, or businesses, I think, was the third category in there. Am it's, I correct? It's underserved or unserved household or businesses. Or so, business, okay. Yes. So, so what any of our businesses in the effect in the uh, the area on that map does it does that apply to the map as That's, well? No, this map okay. doesn't apply to that. Category. Okay. So with that in mind, um, could that could that assist some of some of the businesses? Because you spoke about uh, uh, possibly doing uh, people needing to do business on their computers at city hall or community center. But if we have people at restaurants downtown or uh, in other places where they're, they're going to be accumulating for, for some time, they may need to have that service available to them as well. Or as our downtown grows, you know, I'm hoping that we're going to have incubator businesses in our downtown and certainly that's going to benefit them. So um, I, I don't know how that will fit in, but if that's an area that we can investigate and look into. Uh, for our businesses, um, you know, that I think that would be an appropriate spend. Um, the, in regards to the pickleball, I hear the cry of the, of the people who love to play this sport. And I know in the affected area or the, the, I won't say affected area, but the outlying area for low income. <clears throat> the only park that we have in there is Colorado. Um, I think council member uh, Jones indicated something about wind over there. But I remember uh, back in May, I was doing some filming for the air, uh, air quality board and I was at the Chaco Park and the wind just really whips down 8th Street. And when we moved over to City Hall to finish off the filming, the winds were calm there. So I don't know that, you know, that particular area would be the greatest area. Certainly Colorado Park uh, has a tennis court there and maybe there could be some mitigation of, of um, taking care of that wind problem if the, the city and the council decides that's a good area to put pickleball courts. But um, there, there is an area already there that, that is designated for tennis type uh, play. And, you know, I understand pickleball courts are quite a bit smaller. So, you know, it's just an area for consideration. Other than that, um, you know, I, I, I certainly would like to see these courts put in an area where we already have some large major parks. Uh, for me, the rail trail, I want to see us build our business infrastructure up more on the rail trail. Uh, the city doesn't own a lot of property there, but whoever buys, decides to buy that property um, may decide that that's what they want to do is, is bring in more business or some type of industry, a small industry. I'm not talking about big stuff, but um, I, I, I want to see something that's 
that's going to continue to enhance our downtown. And, you know, we, we had a project that came to us this past Wednesday at council meeting, which was a very good project. And I would like to see things continue on through the rail trail of that type of, uh, to bring in that type of business or something similar that would um, just enhance the downtown. And, and, and I, I realized that, you know, we have a community center there. It's a beautiful thing. The plaza is beautiful. It's the center attraction of our downtown. But I, I'm struggling to figure out in small communities where you have your downtown who has recreational outdoor activities going on, such as what is being proposed on 8th Street or the rail trail. And, and I, I'm not finding anything immediately. And there may be some out there, but I'm just not finding anything uh, that is in your downtown area like that. Um, so that... Those are my takes on those uh, items. Um, in regards to the news, the newspaper request, um, I I have some concerns because newspapers are not something that's growing in the United States anymore. They're on the decline, and um, that's, you know, I, I, I can't say that's why um, the, the company that owned the uh, enterprise took it out. Uh, Mr. Lee uh, gave us some uh, indication as to why they stopped it. But they're not doing that great either with the other newspapers that are going on. Um, I, you know, I, I don't have enough information to even give a um an honest opinion about this but just just off the top of my head uh newspapers are a dying breed now whether they're upcoming in smaller communities um i certainly want to see evidence of that circulation growth the whole nine yards so um right now i i i can't give an opinion on that except to say that in general newspapers are not a growing um, enterprise anymore because it's just some of us older people or people who are tactile and like to hold papers in their hand that will uh, read a newspaper. But for the most part, today's generation is um, doing everything online and, and getting their news from online sources, whether it's a newspaper that's online or some other source that's online. So um, that's kind of my take on it right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Lewis. Uh, let me open up my screen here and then we go to Mr. Yamas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, let's see. Bear with me this time. I, my notes are uh, all over the place and I, I can't read them. <laughs> um, as far as the, uh, the uh, rad card, uh, we talked extensively about that. So um, uh, I guess enough said on that. Uh, I think it's a worthwhile project and it uh, looks like you have a very good handle on it. Uh, could you put that uh, screen back up, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Equipment and technology, that's for uh, the uh, police department? The equipment and technology, yes. Is it possible to increase that to uh, 150 to 200? I think that uh, that's something that uh, I prefer them to have enough money for that because uh, uh, then not have enough and have to come back. Okay. And this in parks and outdoor fitness. Uh, can this money be used to, to create like a plaza or some uh, something like that? Or is, is it strictly to improve existing uh, outdoor? Um, I, it's, 
very basic the way the language is written it says invest in parks public plazas and other public outdoor recreation centers uh, or spaces excuse me i believe that it can be but again it's in that census tract okay yeah that's fine um i agree uh the uh, pickleball craze uh, seems to be uh, hot right now i guess the, and like they say the time to invest is uh, is now so I, I'd, I'd be interested in, in pursuing that um, location, I guess, would be important. I think uh, uh, Mrs. Lewis made a very good point. I haven't seen that either, but that doesn't mean it, it can't work. Uh, maybe because our community is smaller, it, it can work here. I don't know. But uh, I think that uh, the presenters made very good points as to how that would be beneficial to our community. Uh, now, another thing is a, a paracourse. Uh, are you familiar with that? There are various different uh, exercise positions. They're made out of well, timber or wood. Oh, yes. It's actually, we're actually doing research on that now um, through a grant program. Mm -hmm. And the, the only way we could use our book funding for it is if it does go again in that red area. Mm -hmm. um, that investment in parks, outdoor fitness is kind of a placeholder. And when I said we want to replace or add new, replace existing or add something new like that is if we got the grant, this might be the amount that we would have to match with. So it is something that we're looking into. Fantastic. I'd be interested in that. And uh, the, uh, we're talking about HVAC, that's fine. Uh, water sewer, sewer uh, can we use this money to try to uh, improve some of the uh, pumping stations. I know with uh, the way the city's growing, some of the water pressure uh, becomes an issue, especially, uh, you know, folks get up at the same time, uh, you know, the water pressure at, at the shower kind of declines quite a bit. Uh, also, we have uh, various tracks, various buildings. Uh, it came in, in, in various years using a different size pipe, different size, uh, different type of uh, material, uh, steel, concrete, et cetera. Uh, is there something that we can look at and to try to uh, consolidate and uh, uh, utilize one continuous system or, or improve those areas where we'll, we have problems every year, especially with flooding, because we have large pipes going to small pipes, that type of deal. Uh, can that I need to do a little way? more research on the specifics of that, um, but Nicole's also looking at projects, so we'll, we can get back to you on that one. Okay, and uh, I'd like to uh, see if we can improve or if there's any areas that we need to improve on our current water treatment facility uh, so that, uh, uh, again, we have that money now to take care of that so that we're not, not worrying about it later on. Uh, maybe do a, a good inspection of our current facilities, see where we can uh, upgrade, replace, or improve maintenance. Okay. Okay. Broadband, uh, you know, it, I'd have to go with uh, the, the uh, responses from the citizens. It, it doesn't seem like a lot of interest in that. Uh, we can use that money somewhere else. Although I, I think I, I see Mrs. Lewis's point as to maybe providing a, a uh, communications center around the downtown area. That way it makes it a lot more user friendly for folks using their uh, uh, devices. Uh, and they tend to linger more when they have connectivity. So maybe concentrating it more in that area for uh, for the broadband uh, uh, effort. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yannis. Well, I'm in support of everything here. Uh, looks like most of them were pretty much on the same page. Um, I would like to ask uh, Ms. Bauer Sox, we're talking about wastewater uh, something that someone had talked to me about, the water folks talked to me about, is, is purple pipe. Uh, you take wastewater and bring purple pipe into the city to use it to irrigate city property. Um, is it as irrigation? Is that something that uh, I would assume, I, I assume it would be something we could, we could do with this, uh, with the infrastructure development? And is it something that you have considered at your, in your office? Yes, that's definitely, um, thank you, Mayor Furian. 
Um, that's definitely something we could look into. Um, at this point, our treatment facility is not set up to be able to provide recycled water. We would have to go to a different source. Um, and we could do a feasibility study um, and explore different options for how we can access recycled water. And so I think that would be something either we if we can explore if we can use ARPA funds or we could also look at um, other sources of grant funding. Um, there's, there's lots of sources out there that would support that type of project. Okay, well, if there's other money out there, then let's uh, let's go after the other money and we'll save our ARPA money. Um, I think that if the town, if we're going to grow with our businesses and our houses and our people and our waste, our wastewater ponds are eventually going to lose their, uh, going to lose their capacity to serve the whole town. And it will, this purple pipe idea, uh, it, it takes the stress off the, off the freshwater supply and it also takes the, uh, stress uh, gives more use to the wastewater. Is that correct? Yes, it actually serves multiple purposes. It could be used as groundwater recharge to help us with our groundwater sustainability plan. That's another option that we could look at. Um, we could use it for irrigation. And as you are all aware, we are in a severe drought. Um, unless we have um, a few years of good rainfall, we will stay in probably in the same condition. So we need to start looking at um, ways to um, help strengthen our water supply um, in, in the area. And as um, as we're looking at the, the updated master plan, I'm, I'm sorry, the general plan coming up, you know, in order for us to facilitate growth, we will have to take a look at the overall infrastructure of the city, um, not just water, it'll be wastewater, stormwater. Um, to support that type of growth. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ms. Bowersock. Um, and uh, Mr. Yanomas, you have your hand up? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I, I can wait after you're done. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, one item I forgot was uh, the, uh, the proposal by Mr. Lee. Uh, yes, a lot of newspapers uh, are going by the wayside because of uh, uh, the electronic means of uh, communication and, and putting out the information. However, he seems to have uh, uh, tapped into a, a, a viable business uh, uh, entity that's, that seems to be growing. They're actually, from what I understand, they're actually purchasing uh, additional newspapers and they're making them viable. So uh, I would be interested in that because yes, we do need a centralized source of, of uh, reporting, of real journalism, of uh, uh, posting uh, some of those uh, essential uh, postings that the city has to uh, post and notify, uh, et cetera. Uh, so I, I would be interested in, in uh, having staff uh, engage Mr. Lee and see if that really is something that's it's viable and see what his business plan looks like. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I, I, I think it's worth something worth having a look at. Um, I think it's something worth having a look at, and, and I agree. Uh, it won't hurt to have staff and sit down with Mr. Lee and his and his business partners and see. Um, I do know one thing that's missed a great deal is the regular sports pages that everybody that uh, everybody likes to and, and all those all those local family things that you you like to see. And yes, uh, the newspaper the. The paper, the paper paper, I mean, the, the actual material paper has kind of gone out of use and style, but I, uh, the idea of having a, an adjudicated uh, newspaper and, of course, uh, of course, the city advertisements, uh, the city notices our revenue and ads and whatnot. So I don't think there's any problem. I, I would encourage that, that conversation to see and have staff uh, bring back something to us and see what could be done, a business model that, that works. Mr. Lambert. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. And I'm just going to kind of echo a little bit off of that because that was some of the stuff I actually wrote back down here to talk about. For small businesses in our town, uh, when they open up, uh, they have to go through what they call their fictitious business. And they have to run ads in the local newspaper. Uh, so that that's something that, you know, we can look into that why the newspapers are always going to be uh, there for us. Uh, also, 
I mean, newspapers nowadays, they're pretty much using recycled uh, paper. Uh, you know, I, every weekend I get a newspaper just so I could read. Uh, but, but I just wanted to, if there's something that we can look into and hopefully we can discuss later down the road uh, for Mr. Lee, uh, I would be willing to look into it, uh, especially for businesses, for uh, running ads for their business. Uh, you know, it, it's very hard for these small businesses to get any type of a noticement, run special ads, you know, say, hey, we're loading it. And I think a newspaper would be a way to get out there. So I just wanted to put in a little bit with that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and then of course the RAD program, everything staff has recommended. Once again, uh, echoing that I'm totally supportive of, of those programs, those programs that are working. Um, I can, now we, we don't have Mr. Heim on board. I don't know. Um, will pickleball court, will any pickleball courts fit into the rail trail? Is it 20 feet wide? I don't know if anybody could answer that. I'm not sure, but because obviously council is showing interest in pickleball, staff will go back and look at that red area, see if there's any feasible areas that staff thinks it might fit in. And if it does, we'll bring the options back to council. But off, off, I don't even know what a pickleball court looks like. So, we always uh -huh. so we'll work with Joe on the size requirements. I'll work with Stacy on the census check to see where it fits in. And when I bring this back to council, if it's feasible, we'll give you guys a couple options on, on where staff thinks that it might fit. Okay, very good. And I hey, Mayor? Look, yeah, Mr. Jones, I was just gonna echo your ideas uh, on the, on the hey. infrastructure and the pre the, form, the the future planning so that you set up now pickleballs in style, but you set up maybe some restrooms and services uh, situations for future recreation. Go ahead. Well, I do wanna make a comment though. Um, about the the property lines there that rail trail can also be adjusted and moved and tweaked and moved around whatever infrastructure we're going to put there too so don't look at that as we have to stay within those lines of what the those dla properties are so we can we can move a lot of stuff around to uh make no. better use out of the total space can we no <laughs> because bill said we could no bill yeah, those re we could if we take that reimbursement agreement, we have to go back to each one of the entities and look at adjusting it. That those specific, um, whether it's governmental use, that's approved by the Department of Finance, and they, you know, they gave authorization. Like we tried to get a lot of that back as city property, it didn't work, and we had to. The only way they would give it to us is in a reimbursable agreement. So okay. we would have okay, so to. If we Hey, the land, oh, instead right? of you getting money for it, we want it for free, is essentially what you would be doing. Okay, so I, I'm confused here because, okay, let's just say we own the property. We bought them outright, paid off whatever we need to. Do we have the ability to adjust the lot lines to move them around and to within, move the rail trail? Within that area that we own, yes. But we don't own uh, that course. property outright. Of course, not yet. But that's no, if no, we were to we're not purchase. going to own that property outright. Oh, the rail trail, we don't own that. No, so outright. let me bring let me bring the map up again. There's uh, areas okay. that we own outright, uh, or we, we own or are close to that we will own or that we own outright. So let's use Henry Miller Plaza as an example because it is the biggest parcel along that trail. It's um all one parcel. Bear with me while I find it. Here we go. And um, it's larger so you can see it. Okay. So let me give you an example of what Mr. Vaughn, since he's not here to defend himself, probably meant. The way this is split out here, Henry Miller Plaza and this corner area here is um, for government use. So it will be owned outright by the city. Within this red box area, if we want to cut it right here, and sell it to the people that are putting the museum there, we can do that. We can definitely do that. We can move the lot line. This, because we also own the rail trail here, we could take this line and move it back. I mean, if we want it to, we could align it exactly with the rail trail because we own that property. However, property C is a future development property. We cannot take this red line that's here and move it over here and say, now we want this. 
we can't do that because this C. Of course, Sonia, I think we're talking about the same thing here. Okay. So let's just say C, we purchased it outright. We owned it. No other entities owned it. Is that even possible? Not with these funds, just say with general funds. If is we bought possible? this, then yes, we could split it however okay. we want. To. Okay, so that part is, is settled. So, okay, Pardon Mark, so yeah, you're jumping the gun here. You scared me a so, little bit. We can't move lines magically. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just Sonia, me. Can, you, can you quit for a minute, Sonia? Sure. I'm saying if we own the land outright and we own the rail trail, if you want to put that map back on, I'll explain So just like we were able to uh, alter lines or cut out or carve out an area on the corner of seven and age for the private party that's buying it, let's just say we own C outright. If you're saying we owned uh, parcel A or item A there, we can move the line from item C up, right? Or we can move that trail down a little bit if we need a little space on the other side, right? If we owned it, both of it, that's what I was saying. And that's what Bill told me. Is that incorrect? Uh, you're on mute, Sonia. Muted, Sonia. Sonia, you're on mute. We couldn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how that happened. I said yes. If we own the line C, then we can change the lot line adjustments. And that's all I was saying, because we're not going to build something on something we don't own, right? Exactly. We, we're not allowed okay, to. Okay, so what I was saying was correct. If we own the property, we own the structure that we put on there. If we own the adjacent parcel, we can move some, some items around, right? If we own or it, Or am I yes. missing something? No, okay, I was, I was confused saying. because I thought you were implying that we you, could do it on the You jumped the gun, you. Sonia. I'm uh, sorry? You jumped the gun on that one. Okay, well, and I just apologized. Okay, I, I said okay. I was confused and I apologized. All right, thank you. But uh, um, the RDA and the DLA has been a very complex and confusing process. Um, and that, uh, that property, that C area property, we, if we wanted to buy that, we would have to pay out all the, essentially the heirs, right? Uh, the all the entities uh, that have a, if the city, it's for proposed development. I want to make sure I'm correct on this. It's listed as proposed development. If the city wanted to develop on it, then we would have to purchase it from uh, all the other entities that have an interest in the property at this time. Is that correct? Yes, we would purchase it. The, the city holds the land, but yes, we would have to purchase it. And then the, the reimbursement agreement would pay all the different entities. That's correct. Okay, very good. Okay, so I think it's pretty clear that um, that council wants to, uh, we've been pretty clear about what we want to see, uh, that uh, everybody is pr pretty well on the same page about what we want to see happen. And that's a good thing. Um, the, the homeless hotel vouchers, that's a little help there. Uh, I have just on the homeless thing, I have been uh, discussing and am going to be bringing something, uh, an item to MCAG to see if we can get the, the conversations going at MCAG about handling homelessness as a regional issue, because, uh, rather than uh, more as a regional than rather just each entity. Um, and, uh, it's, it's a big issue. Uh, the, the polls that I have been uh, privy to have said that the public wants it handled. And so I'm doing the best I can at that level. Uh, so we've got to hold back our, uh, we, we're hold, we've got our, our, our upper money. Uh, we're going to have, we have quite a bit held back here so we can plan for the future. We've got plans here to go uh, get things done. So I want to, I think we're we're on a good a good uh, good track, pretty clear about what we want to see done. Staff, are we clear? Are are you clear on direction from from council today, or is there any clarification you would like to hear? Sorry, that I was on mute again. Um, 
I think I'm, I have clear direction on what to bring back. Obviously, there will be some more decisions to make in addition to the things that we've requested. I don't know that that will spend the front being in its entirety. So we'll bring back the first round, and we'll just say that it's an ongoing process. But very good. all for your input tonight. Thank you very much. And um, with that, I think we have completed our workshop, and staff has direction. So I will move to item seven. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Council Member Lambert, make a motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, Mr. Lambert, thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Council Member Lewis, second. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. I have a motion by Council Member Lambert and a second by Mayor Platoon Lewis to adjourn the meeting. Roll call, Ms. Melanie. Jones? Yes. Lambert? Yes. Lewis. Yes. Lamas. Yes. Faria. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Meeting adjourned at 6 p.m. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Good night. Happy Thanksgiving.